Movie and Radio Guide in 1941. Oh, wow. Let's do some time travel. Let's see how well we know the star. This is what they would be reading at the time. And they might know this. Let's see if we know this. It might have been hard back in the day. All right. We're going to start with number two. If you saw caviar, chocolate ice cream, a bowl of cracked ice, and a bottle of champagne on a table in a banquet set, what would we, they really be? Okay, it be dinner. Caviar, yum. Do you eat caviar? Do any of you eat caviar? Let me know. Have you ever eaten caviar? We just tried this vegetarian vegan caviar. And it was made with, I think it's what it was. It was made with seaweed. And I loved it. I loved it. My daughter bought it to see, but then she didn't eat it. And I just fell in love with it. It was totally cool. Would you eat that? Chocolate ice cream, a bowl of cracked ice, and a bottle of champagne on a table in a banquet set. I would think this was a romantic scene in a movie. Okay, so let's go and see if you're right. Make your guess. What was it? What was it? We're going to go down here. The caviar would be blackberry jam. The chocolate ice cream, a molded chocolate pudding. Ice cream melts too fast. The bowl of cracked ice would be cellophane. Blech and the champagne, ginger ale, or lemon soda. Nice banquet, huh? Well, I don't think so, but Hollywood is all about, you know, the way it makes you feel and the vision of it. Okay, number three. Let's see if we get this one right. What famous director answers the telephone at his home in Japanese double talk? Okay, I, Hitchcock, Hitchcock. You know, what do you think, guys? Alfred Hitchcock is my guess. Do you have a guess? Number three. Joseph von Sternberg. He likes to pretend he's the Japanese butler. You can't get a word in edgewise, so you hang up. Well, swell. Mr. von Sternberg doesn't like telephone callers. Well, today there's all these apps he could use, and he wouldn't have to sound uh, so interesting here. Okay, would you try that? I don't know. Number four. What stars would you expect to find playing a quartet consisting of piano, cello, violin, and harp? I don't know. I'm thinking, is it like a silly answer? Groucho? The Marx Brothers? What stars would you expect to be playing a quartet consisting of piano, cello, violin, and harp? Can you guys make a guess? Let's find out. Let's find out. Uh, Mark Brothers is pretty off, I'm sure, I'm sure. You'd see Eddie Robinson at the piano, Paul Mooney playing the violin, Anita Louise at the harp, or Harpo Marx, I got one, I got one, I got one, and Misha Auer tuning the cello, an expensive but talented musical quartet. I feel like they're making these per perfect, purposely hard. Okay. Number five. I'm so excited. I got one. I got one. Okay. I feel like there'd be a trap door under me and they'd be like, she's gone. Okay. If you gave Dolores Del Rio a rose, a gardenia, and a violet, what would she do with them? I feel like this is a trick question. If you gave Dolores Del Rio a rose, a gardenia, and a violet, what would she do with them? Maybe she would put them in her hair. I don't know this actress. Is this somebody who puts it in their hair? What do you guys think? Number five. The beautiful Mexican star would thank you and eat them. Flowers form a definite part of the Rio Del Rio diet. She likes the gardenias best. That is interesting. I have friends that put up flower pictures and they do eat them. And I, I'm the type of person. If I went to a restaurant and they gave me flowers and they said you can eat it, I would eat it. I would do okay. I know, but I wouldn't be able to go forage it because I, you know, if my kids touch something, I'm like. Put it down. It could be poisonous. That's how I was raised, Mom. If you're listening, to think everything was poisonous, everything. So, but if you told me like an authority, like you can eat that, I would eat it. Otherwise, I don't know about this diet. Number six. Who said I won't eat anything? Eat anything that I can pat. Who said I won't eat anything that I can pat? I think somebody who's a vegetarian. Let's see. Number six. Who do you guys think? George Arliss. He's a total vegetarian, though he eats an occasional fish. 
says you can't pat any fish. How about a rhinoceros, Mr. Arliss? I mean, they're being a little tricky. I guess that was a thing. That they were vegetarians. I kind of think a vegetarian is something new. Do you know of somebody from back in the day who were vegetarians? Let me know. How far back do you think this goes? Okay. In the States, you know? Okay. Number seven. When you see fog, spider webs, dusty clothes, or snow in a picture, what are they made of? When you see fog, spider webs, dusty clothes, or snow in a picture, what are they made of? Um... What are, like cotton, maybe you see cotton and that's kind of the, some of the, like for Halloween and stuff that people put out. I think it may be made of cotton. What do you guys think? Let's see. Number seven, follow down with me. Fog is finally sprayed mineral oil. Oh, there's multi answers. I'm going to get better at this. There are multi answers. Fog is finally sprayed mineral oil, spider webs or spun glue, spun glue. Oh my goodness. Dust is colored fuller's earth, and the snow is untoasted cornflakes. Simple, isn't it? Snow is untoasted cornflakes. Like, like you would just get, I, I don't know how to get untoasted cornflakes. Like, you go to the store, I am, like, not the biggest gardener. How would I get cornflakes that look white? Can somebody let me know? Like, I am so confused by this. Okay. Number eight, if a studio wanted a rain scene and it was simply pouring outside, where would they take the shot? This was, I did peek at some of these answers, okay? Just a couple, just a couple. And this one was my favorite answer. It really is going to change like every scene I see. If a studio wants a rain scene and it was simply pouring outside, where would they take the shot? Look at this, look at this indoors of course on the soundstage real rain makes too blurry a picture on the set the rain falls only in front of the camera reason better lighting of the rain drops that way so on the set the rain falls only in front of the camera i feel like we do some footage like i want to do this and like see if i can make it look like it's pouring everywhere and see if this really works i'll put out the snowflakes Okay, number nine. If you saw a lot of actors being shaved for a barbershop scene and saw them licking the shaving cream off afterwards, what would you think it was? Anybody want to guess? If you saw them licking the shaving cream off, what would you think it was? I think some of you guys are going to guess this. Try some yourself. It's whipped cream. Shaving lather. Tr dries too quickly under the hot lights so you can imagine all those old barber scenes they actually have whipped cream on their face so that totally changes some scenes you kind of just like want to read i feel like i'm getting all the secrets of hollywood here all right number 10 what foreign star now a star over here said there are no men in hollywood to compare to the men in my own country i threw in that accent at the end pretty impressive here number 10 Okay, there are no men in Hollywood to compare to the men in my own country. What is, who is this? Hmm, Greta Garbo. Let me see, never said. Sonia Henny. I said that right. She meant it. At, has a boyfriend in Norway, and that's the reason. Okay, they always try to stir up these love stories. Number 11. What is the most expensive and dangerous glamour aid used by the stars? Um, I maybe something that would tan them. Would they want to be tan? No. Something that would straighten their hair. Like a really a hot press for their hair. What do you guys guess? What is the most expensive and dangerous glamour aid used by the stars? Number 11. And it is metallic powder for hair. Gives gold gleams under the lights. Cost a lot. And if any bit of it works into the ears or the eyes, it cuts Yet they use it even though a former star lost her hearing because some metallic powder got in her ear. Oh my goodness, today it would be total lawsuits. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not. I mean, we do wear glitter. I've worn like glitter makeup and things like that. And you do usually get something in your eye. So I've done it and I haven't been paid Hollywood salaries. So maybe, maybe. Don't try this at home. Number 12. What? Maybe the whipped cream, shaving cream I would. What kind of actors do the stars hate most to work with because they steal every scene? 
Would it be children or animals? I have to guess. What kind of actors do the stars hate most to work with because they still ever seen? I'm going to say animals and maybe specifically monkeys. What do you guys think? Okay. Animals and children. That's not fair. They asked two. Well, I got it. I got it. Do you notice Myrna Loy when Asta is in a scene? Or Bing Crosby when baby Sandy is on his lap? Or Tarzan when there's a chimp with him? Well, that's your answer. <laughs> We're going to be watching Tarzan and watching the chimps. He's going to be sneering at the chimp here. I don't think that's fair. I mean, children don't ask to be working. Okay. Number 13. What are the stars who are known as personalities rather than movie stars by their studios? Kind of think of like talent and personality is like um, on Fox News or CNN. They're like the talent, the personalities. What are the stars who are known as personalities rather than movie stars by their studio? Hmm. Why would they not be called movie stars? Let me try to guess. What are the stars who are known as personalities rather than movie stars by their studio? Maybe people who are like the second, like this, not the biggest actors, but like the character actors that would stand in or things like this. Okay. Number 13. Let's see if you guys got it. Did you make a guess? You have to guess. I can't be the only one that makes crazy guesses. The Disney studios called Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and the rest of the Merry Crew personalities oh they weren't specific enough but it's so interesting to see them around same things we are still around right now i feel like these are trick i mean they're hard enough as it is no trick questions number 14 who is the favorite star of the tropical countries who is the favorite star of the tropical countries now i peeked at this one and i will give you a hint we mentioned him earlier we mentioned him earlier we had about a chimp and things like this. Let's see. Do you know it? Did it come to, come to you? Tarzan leads the field. His exploits are surefire with the natives of hot countries. That's what they say. And it doesn't matter whether the film is silent or running backwards. It's just as good. I feel like this is a little bit of a Hollywood machine. What do you think? Okay. But I, what I love about this is this is the Hollywood machine. Like today, you look up, you have like E True Hollywood Story. You know, uh, they have, it's all, I mean, sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's the dirt. And I like, our channel is all about fun and nostalgia. So when I start looking up these people, you know what I see is everything, ugh, you know? And I want to give you like the way that we saw it back then. I want to put us back in time and enjoy why Hollywood was so great. It was because we could fall in love with these larger in life characters. So. This gives you a little bit. It gives you a little bit. Um, I mean, they had the head of Harper's and all that. You know, we get a little bit. But, like, let's just put ourselves in their shoes a little bit. And number 15. What colors are the most difficult to photograph in Technicolor and what shades defy the regular film? Ooh, this is good to know. We sometimes do some colorization of old movies with AI. Very early process here so it's not like technicolor at all <laughs> but what colors are the most difficult to photograph in technicolor and what shades defy the regular film i'm gonna say green because green screen always comes out wrong so i'm just gonna guess that what color would you say what colors number 15. black and white answers both questions black is too dense for technicolor and absorbs too much light for ordinary film. White picks up too many of the other colors in Technicolor. They get around this, okay, here's the trick, by using pale blue for white and dark blue or red for black in uncolored films. Are you getting dizzy? Oh, that is a good trick to know, okay? We'll come back later to enjoy the rest of our quizzes and Hollywood and it's just so fun to be with you and I'm so glad you tuned in.